Hello, everyone, and welcome back to some Never Alone. Where I am a tiny little fox. Back? Yep, back. I am a tiny little fox, and I am joined by Angel. Hello. Who is a little girl. Bola, I think. Yep. You look like you're glowing. I don't think you can make the jump anymore. Yeah, because it's coming back. Okay. Or I could just get good and do that from the start. I mean, yeah. I messed up. <laughs> Bola. Not quiet. Uh, all right, so I can make this jump. It doesn't look like the ice is moving, which implies that you can as well. Oh no, not again. Bola. I jumped too early. Try bowling the ice. There we go. Oh no. Oh. There was the there's the fish spirits that have been following us. Well the good news is this is our save. <laughs> Thank you, little fishies. Thank you, fishies. <laughs> this, game is, this game is so wonderful. And polar bear is back. Run! Flee for your lives! It's polar bear again! I missed the jump. I make the saddest noise. It's so, so upsetting. Run. <laughs> run, 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 run. Coming back again. It's going to appear in front of us. I'm calling it now. Right here. Oh, that's an owl. That's an owl. Right here. 
That's a polar bear. Nope. I mean, like, its return is... I missed the jump again. That was so bad. Oh, that's... That's also terrifying. Uh... Okay, so just go back before it goes up. Oh no! Oh no! I I saw I saw my character freeze there. Don't no don't get crushed, please. I am I'm gonna wait because it's about to go up. Yep. And then now, uh, don't run ahead because you're gonna mess up my camera. There's something I need. Okay. Because so, and I'm on a timer of how long it takes to get to you. And I. Because you can't get up here, right? No. Nope. Oh, oh, there you go. Fox needs to come here. Okay, so if I come, like, back here, it sees me, and then I can, maybe, I got hit. I want to know if I can, like, I'm going to test something. Yeah, so I can get onto that wall and come back up there. I've just got a time and get the jump right. And I think now it's your turn to distract it. Well, no, I think I think you go like down there and throw the bola at him. Okay, so you need to. Oh, that's brutal. That's brutal. Okay, so what I think we need to do is so I come up here do my little fox thing. Hello, Mr. Bear. I am small and cute. And then you throw a bola at it. Oh, okay. Uh, so I come here. Hello. I missed. I 
missed. I'm dead. I'm so dead. I am not in a good place. I almost made it out. Okay. This is a interesting little fight. Okay, so we come back to here. But I do think I need to come down here, grab his attention again, come here, come up, and miss the jump, apparently. So I come here, get its attention, jump up here, miss that jump again. So now he's going to be on you, and I apologize. So I... I get the thing's attention so that it's looking this way. Uh, I then climb up here, make this jump, and I then I think... And yeah, now you go bola quick. Terrible for me. Nope. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what do I do now? Because, like, I gotta distract it, right? I gotta get it looking at me. But there's nowhere for me to jump to from here, I don't think. If I go, like, up here... Oh, that was brutal. We're almost through this side, right? You can see. If I come like here, and come up and jump over. Where does that put us? With a way out. There we go. I'm a clever little foxy. Look at me. True nature of the land beneath them. All right, uh, that is another level. Uh, it was only 13 minutes, though, so we're gonna continue. Okay, continue. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Oh, we were on a whale spirit. <laughs> Om nom nom, delicious fox. Okay. Oh. <laughs> we can swim now. Look at me, doggy paddle. It's so cute. That's so cold. You know what that looks like. Yep. Wonder if I can get up here. Nope, doesn't look like it. At least not right now. Doggy paddle, doggy paddle, doggy paddle. Oh, hello, spirit. Uh... This wall next? Ah. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Oh, I could have gone back, maybe. Uh, don't get off of this for now. I want to. I'm thinking that the play that I jump onto this one, and now I'm close enough that that one is also. Can you get onto that one from there? Okay. What if the play is just... I want to see something. I thought I saw... No, no rope or anything. Can you bolo the other one into existence? So, try boloing down uh, into the one you're standing on when I go grab the other one. Because I think the bola can also... Because uh, bola up right now. I want to see something. Alright, so I'm going to go try and grab that other one when I do Bola downwards. Okay. Maybe if I jump. Yeah, you might, you might have to perfectly time the jump from when I, uh... Like that perfectly timed jump? Yes, just like that perfectly timed jump. That I am totally capable of. Alright, uh, jump a little bit early. You need to jump and catch this one, and then, uh, I missed. And I am such a terrible- I am so terrible at being a tiny fox. There we go. Now you break that. I said break that. <laughs> and we see what happens. Wait a minute. What does this allow us for swimming? Oh, hello there. Oh, nope. I gotta do discs, I think. Or maybe not. And now we come up here. And we're in a new area. Hello, spirit. Ah! Oh, great. You can press A. <laughs> it just faster. speeds up my very slow doggy paddle. Yes. Can you make this? If you do the like crouch thing, can you go through? No. Okay. So this is something that I have to do. Uh, can I? 
jump to this wall and then jump to this wall and then jump to this wall and then jump to this wall. Okay. I can... I don't think... Oh, yeah, there we go. I did it blind. Can you get to this? So now it's going to drift back over here so that I can get back on it. And we'll just see where it goes. No, don't throw things. We talked about this. It's very rude. I'm glitched. Did you see that? No. I just, like, I hung in midair for a second there. Alright, so now we come back up and we see what that new spirit that you just uh, got us is. Oh, hello. Oh, so that lets you get on this. So come over. Jump over to me. Wait, is that to... Uh... Come up here. There we go. And now you can uh, clear that, which will let me come up here, which will lower this one so that you can get on. And then I can jump to this one, which uh, you can jump onto, and then we jump up here. I'm hanging again. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I think what's happening is I'm interacting with the, uh... With the, like, ex with the, like, limbs of the spirit things. Or the spirits. Oh, that's interesting. Bola? You can- you might be able to thread one through there. Uh, oh no, we need to get you around so that you can go up top. But that looks like it's mostly just a shortcut? Come down here. Oh, I missed a jump. Okay. So Nuna can swing. Unfortunately, I can... Oh, oh, I see what I need to do. I know what I need to do. You stay here. I need to get back up. So where am I? I'm there. And now, both of those spirits are there, so you can swing from one to the other. So now... So now I come over here, and now there's the bug on the wall that you can see. Can 
Can you jump? make the jump from there? You can. All right. So now uh, you clear that ice for me. Come on. And now I can come up here? And you can swing up to there. Maybe facing the other way. Yeah, you can make that. It's just... I don't think I can do that jump, though. <laughs> And the entire place floods. Oh, but now I can swim up. So you need, I think you need to hit that bowl up. Oh. The water, so the water prevents you from hitting the bola shot. Uh, which I think means that I need, so I need to be able to drag that over. But the water's blocking me from doing that. I think. Oh, oh, I can. Uh, if I can make the jump, I would, I think. I can wall jump this. Stop throwing things at me. We've talked about this. Hang time. That is a really weird thing. Like, that's not the first time that's happened, where it's just, I feel like I got a jump right, but uh, I just freeze in midair instead. Jump, and I'll okay. Why can't I grab that wall? What's wrong with me? What? Need a running start. Hmm? Need a running start. Yep. Wait for it to get on the other side of the waterfall first. And now, it's one of the wall bugs. So now you can do this. Well then. And then I need to make the jump again. Because I am in terrible at platformers! Hang timed. Wait up there. I'm coming back. Eventually. 
<laughs> there is a very real argument that this section... Let me out of the frickin' water. There we go. That this entire section of just me struggling is going to get cut. But it's also kind of, you know, entertaining-ish. I suppose so. I don't think we needed to uh, come down. I don't. Th I th think we might need to go the other way. I missed. <laughs> so bad. Terrible at being a fox. <laughs> Mr. Fox, you can do it. Don't patronize me. Okay, what am I... Okay, so I need to... get to the wall. And then hit space when I reach the wall. But... Okay. This is the worst jump in the history of jumps. Why did I decide I wanted to play a platformer? Why did I do this to myself? <laughs> There we go. Can you break this that I'm standing next to? Nope. Okay. I messed up. Oh, you can break that? Okay, and that's another... Okay, that's another flood, which is what we needed. And we're in cutscene. I'm... Are you... I'm okay. Come. Come. We have more things to... We have more things to shenanigans. Okay. Uh, that is another level. Let's do... Let's do some insights, because we've got 11 ones we haven't watched yet. And I kind of want to watch some of them. Okay. We missed this one. I know I know where this one is and we'll have to go back for it. In the winter when we were traveling, we didn't build sod houses, we built snow houses. In Canada they call them igloo, but here in Alaska we call them apuya. We'd do a day of travel, and then we'd make a apuya. The next day, my father would set traps, spend the day there, rest the dogs, give them something to eat, and then the following day, we continue to the next place. We'd go to my dad's sister, who had a house at the barn. They had a small sod house over there. We didn't have to do anything. we just visit with them, and my dad and my sister were glad to see each other and they'd talk away while us kids played outside or go to sleep. By the time we get back to our home, my father would leave us with our aunt or with my grandmother. And then he'd start on his trips and go check his trap line. We were not into 8 to 5 kind of time, you know. We're in a totally different kind. We're in ecological time. drum is something that's common to all cultures in Alaska. All cultures have a drum that may have some stylistic differences or differences in the materials that's made. 
but it's still a recognition of life and vitality and the drum here is the heartbeat and when you continue drumming soon it will be in line with your heartbeat because that's what it's supposed to be the heartbeat of the community and it symbolizes vitality and it's it's the most tremendous feeling to be in a room and to have one long row of all the drummers and to have that feeling of unity and everyone beating in harmony the drum beat in unison is the most beautiful feeling and to know that you're connected you're on the land that you are connected to and even if you grew up outside of the community that which is in you comes from this area and it's, it's the greatest feeling <laughs> the bola is what we call kilamitam. And the kilamitam is made out of braided sinew tied out to some heavy bone which you could twirl. In my case, we're catching ducks. When we were out uh, whaling, sometimes the ducks start flying. And they're good for duck hunting. You know, uh, if you're a whaling crew, you can't make too much noise. So you can't use a shotgun for um, getting some duck soup handy, you know. So bolo was a really handy weapon to use for catching ducks. You know, the, Ducks flying, you throw it up and tangles up the bird, and down they go. The scaredest I've ever been, I was 12 years old. We floated out on a piece of ice uh, while we were duck hunting. It was a bluebird day, just clear blue skies, and there was three of us, myself, my brother, and my dad. Next thing you know, we see this dark, dark shadow on the ice. Uh, we look and it goes behind us. So we, we all jumped up startled and uh, my dad, he started running. We got back to the ridge there. The, uh, the ice had fractured, cracked and broke off and we were floating away. We were, we were drifting. <laughs> it was close enough to where my dad would have made it. He stopped and he thought about throwing us across and if one of us was on the other side, we would be split up. So he stopped and he just so happened to have a, a cell phone on him. 911 didn't pick up. <laughs> That's the worst feeling in the world right there. 911 did not pick up. So he left a, a message because they record their calls. Once he had relayed that information, his cell phone died. That was the scariest moment I've ever had in my life. We were floating away and I thought we were left for dead. Uh, he kept calm during this situation. Uh, he's bringing out everything positive in this case, you know. I'm crying, my brother's freaking out. It went from clear blue to dense, dense fog. Within a couple hours, we heard the chopper flying around, so they must have gotten our message. Uh, we thought we were saved, and then the chopper sound went away, so we lit. Some of the sled on fire, it's plastic. We thought black smoke in the fog would create some kind of marker. Chopper pilot uh, had mentioned uh, when we got rescued, you could see a glow in the fog. And he slowed down there, and sure enough, as soon as he slowed down, uh, we got within visual. That was definitely the scariest moment of my life was floating away and not knowing what the outcome was going to be.
We're very much aware of the climate change. And it's been for many years, even before climatologists were noticing the change, in it we're already saying, Sila Alangoktok, our climate is changing. If the heat is going the way it is right now, for us it's going to be pretty bad. Different birds are coming, and they're coming earlier, and sometimes rain is more than what we want because when there's more rain, we know it's going to melt the permafrost. In my time as a young quail, when I was nine years old, we're hunting from ice that was about 25 feet thick. And there was giant icebergs already floating, coming by. That was the first signs of a changing climate. Ice that never broke before was now moving. Now, here it is 50 years later, we're hunting quail from ice that's 18 inches thick. There's no more thick ice. It's creating a malfunction in our whaling season, is, is what it is. And actually, more than that, all seasons in general. I think we are more scientists than more people will realize. We have more knowledge of those things than people will ever know. All right, and that is where we're going to call it because this recording is starting to get a little long uh, because I kept messing up that one jump. And that's definitely the only reason why. <laughs> Nothing else. But uh, that will be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed, and we will see you in the next one. Until then, good luck, stay safe, and don't die.